Now we are back from our sewing machine and I'd like to show you all the stitching we have done and the finished folio. The finished folio is absolutely gorgeous once it's all sewn together. Let me untie one of these closures. So I've taken a piece of twine, stuck it underneath my craft circle, tied two very tight knots so it's attached, and then it will just hang here until you want to close it. So to close the folio, we just use our finger to put the twine underneath the circle, wrap around the other circle. So you're just wrapping around the two circles and bringing it forward. So that's how to finish off the front closure and the back closure is done exactly the same way. So we will see what how we sewed. The folio, as you know, is made out of two envelopes that are attached with a fabric hinge. So this first left envelope when we open it up, I did all my sewing on this left envelope first because this is not attached yet the last time you saw me because it's easier to go to your sewing machine to open up and everything, it's a flat, flat envelope and you're just sewing for decoration just to give it a decorative De decorative double stitching line vertically once vertically twice this when it's flat you're vertically attaching the hinge this fabric hinge to the envelope so that's decorative stitching one, two, three, three vertical lines you stitched. This is the back of the envelope. So this will be the fourth decorative vertical stitch, the fifth vertical stitch. And then let's place it how it's going to sit like this. Now we're going to add the horizontal stitch. This little front flap is loose like this. So we want to fold these two lines down or fold this flap down and actually sew it down to this front portion. So that's what I did here. I folded it down, fold the flap down, and I sewed up to this flap, up to the hinge vertical stitch. So I sewed one side, then I went to the second side. That's So that's two horizontal stitching. And I see my husband's on the phone and he talks loud. So let's open this up and that hinge, just fold it back and open this whole section up like this and you're going to sew a vertical section on, I said a wrong thing. It's this will be, if these are the horizontal, two horizontal portions of that envelope. So it looks like it goes straight across, but because our hinge, we have to move our hinge out of the way, we sew it in two parts. We sew this part first on either side fold that hinge back and out of the way and two times there. So let's fold this up. Then we take the second envelope. Let's open it up. We do the vertical lines first and it's not attached at this point. It's just an envelope. So I am Oh, look at that, my stuff fell out of my side. I'll put that back in a moment. We do our one vertical stitch line for decoration, two vertical stitch lines for decoration, and that's just on the front flap. 
not on that spine piece, just on the front flap. And this little section will be opened because you haven't sewn it down yet. So you're gonna, this little part, end part of your envelope, you're gonna sew vertically, one, vertically two, and you're going to attach it. I attached it with glue. So the two envelopes, let's fold it so you can see that it's a mirror image of itself. This is how it sits. So when you open the folio, this folio, once it's folded, I added some glue on this part of the folio and then laid it down on the fabric hinge. Then we take it to the sewing machine and again, because, okay, we are going to attach that fabric hinge. So it's just glued on. I maneuver it this way and this flap still is not sewed down yet. I attach the fabric hinge with a vertical stitch. Then, because it's attached, we have to fold down. I'm trying to move it slowly so you can see how it's positioned. And the flap, you are just sewing this opened portion down. You're folding it down and double stitching. So we've sewn this and that. I want a stitching line across here. So let's go this way. We're moving the, the fabric hinge out of the way and we're starting in our sewing machine right here because that's all sewn already. So this, oops, this is, yes, this is the correct spot. We are going to sew what hasn't been sewn. So the whole folio is lined with a stitching line all the way around, outlined with a stitching line all the way around. So let's fold this back how it's supposed to be. So you have stitched all the way around the outside of everything. Our folio, the folded envelope, creates a large pocket. We will be creating a large tag to tuck in here. I'm waiting till I do the main part of the journal with you before I add some more. So we open it up and we had this pocket. So I've tucked some things in the pocket. We have, this is from the printable and I've printed it on a cardstock paper. I've added a snippet. A snippet is made with a piece of cheesecloth, a piece of cheesecloth, part of a crocheted bit, and part of lace. So it's just bits that are laid on top of one another and sewn. So I did this off camera because it takes a little while to do, and I hand stitched the snippet together. These are hand stitched snippets that I have created, adding various pieces of lace just on top of one another and hand stitched them on. And just different pieces of, you can see the larger pieces of lace here. And it's just layer on layer on layer on layer. And then some stitching on top. It's quite, quite long to do these on camera. And I can do a separate video for that as well. So let's start here. We've attached this beautiful card. We've collaged on the back. The beautiful collage pieces are from the uh, from the kit. One, two, three pieces. And I purchased this. 
call it craft tape. Duckbrand.com, easy tear. Packing tape, packing tape is what it's called. So it's, um, and that's what I use as my washi tape. It's so strong. It's like score tape. So it it's very, very strong. So I tear off a piece about, I don't know, about an inch and a half or so. And then I cut off little pieces, usually half an inch. Well, it depends on, on my on what I'm gluing down. So I start off with a half inch piece and you'll see how I used it here in this folio. Half inch piece. These are narrow pieces. So I would have done a, let's tear that in half. Then I'm gonna cut this into a quarter inch sections. So these are long little bits of packing tape. To me, it's craft paper with a very heavy adhesive on the back and I just laid it down on angles like that. So this is my one of my journaling cards inside. Second journaling card from the printable. I fussy cut. This is a sheet of decorative paper. It has a whole bunch of a whole bunch of little leaves. I fussy cut those little leaves. I fussy cut these mushrooms and flowers that we're going to be decorating the pages with. I fussy cut the circles, the little bits of tape pieces, the ticket pieces, the stamps, and the all the little pieces. So I have everything in here for me to grab and use to decorate the back. And okay, that went here. And also inside the pocket, I did decorated this postcard. I added a stamp, again from the printable, and a little leaf. So I'm just going to, okay, let me tuck this one in first, then this one, then this one. Okay, and we open it up, and we have those one, two, three beautiful file folder pockets from the printable and I made th three tags. The tags come in the printable. I mounted the tags onto a sh manila shipping tag. I glued, a, 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 I fussy cut one of the, the brown and white or brown and ivory mushrooms, glued it to the back. All of them are done like that and on these set of three, I've attached a postage stamp and I stamped a cancellation mark on top. I've added one, two, three bits. I always work in three. I put a piece of trim on the back, cheesecloth, and a fabric. So my piece of crochet trim is like that. Let's move over here. Crochet trim. Let's grab a piece of cheesecloth. I always have cheesecloth pre-cut in about an inch and a half width and they're long strips. So I'm just going to cut a little bit about like that. And I just, I pull the diagonals and place it down. Then I have a piece of the, the Tim Holtz fabric that I'm working with. Okay, this is a narrower piece, but that's okay. Let's just cut a little piece. I like to fray the edge if I can't tear it. And you can take it. I take my two, I always work on a diagonal. And then I make a little, I'm imagining a line on the diagonal and then I'm making a little pleat. Sorry, making a little pleat. So it's almost like a little point, almost a little point in the corner and in here. And then where's a tag? Then I would have just taken it on here. I position the, the, the big, biggest piece on the back. Then I put these two pieces on the front 
so it sandwiches the tag. And then I take it to the sewing machine and I double stitch all the way around. And that's what it looks like close up. So all three of them are done like that. So I'm going to place them back in our file folder. And close the file folder. And let's close it with the twine. One. Whoops. And there we are. So we open it up. Still that first envelope. And I've attached tape from this, this craft packing tape, tore little strips, one quarter of an inch strips to the top and the bottom. And inside this first pocket, it's glued one, two, three sides, so it's a pocket. I have one of these beautiful illustrations and I've sandwiched three pieces of lace again. One torn lace like this. So to get a small piece, this is lace by the meter here that we we get in Canada at a fabric store. So just a small piece, and I'm lucky. Oh, this is old, old, so it tears nice. So I got one piece for the back side. Then I take this other lighter, thinner piece, or where's my a piece I can actually show you. Let's pull one of these out. Okay, so for the back piece, I like the more jagged, jagged ends on the outside. Place it like that. Or maybe on the side like that. And this next piece of the torn lace and another little piece of cheesecloth. And the cheesecloth, this must be the edge because it has that real heavy portion, which I'm gonna just tear off because I don't want the heavy portion. And I'm gonna keep this. And again, remember, I go out on a, I go on a diagonal. It's just how I design. And, or maybe we can go up this way, up this way. And then I have tatting like this, and I'm just gonna, Grab a little bit of chatting and give it a cut. Oh, that looks like it's too much. Let's cut this in half. And we're going to put this beautiful little tatting bit right there. And again, go to my sewing machine and I double stitch all the way around there. And when you're done, this is what it looks like. I left the back plain because it's quite a small little card. And so we have this little card that we took out of there. And this is a larger one. So I did the same sort of thing, but just with different laces and trims. I also put a little leaf in there. That's an edge leaf that I fussy cut. And then I layered my lace, one lace on top on the back, one lace on the back, a lighter lace and a couple more pieces. So that's how I make my little, little raggedy or shabby chic raggedy little tabs. So I have one in there, one in here. I just, I'm gonna call them yeah, just shabby tags. I just love them. So in here, I pulled this piece out. This is the notebook that I made I made this off camera and it is a time card. Very large time card. Time cards here are three and a quarter, I'm sorry, it is three and one half inches wide by nine inches tall. I took some book page and I straddled it over the page and glued it down with a glue stick. On the back, I made a collage. I started off with this extra piece that we had left over from the printable, and I straddled it over this side as well. So it's this large portion of paper is the second piece I glued on and wrapped it around. So when I made this collage, I 
glued this little acorn on. Then I glued two stamps and then this foliage piece. On the inside, I continued with the collage. I layered one of these images, leaf images on, a stamp and mushrooms. Then I, I have extra bits of paper that I cut off. I was, I came upon some legal size paper that was too long to fit in the printer because I believe it's about 14 inches long. So I had to cut it off one, two, three, about three inches in order to fit in my printer. So I have several of these long, long strips. So I, I pick 10. 10 sheets and then I just tore the sheets off because I like the way that looks. I love staggered torn pages. I took that image and that this image is from a piece of paper. This is the continued piece of paper and this image is six and a half inches tall by three and a half inches wide, the same width as my card. I wanted it to match as it was sitting on there. This is a piece of paintable wallpaper. I made it the same width as my time card and then I tore off a piece and I laid it on top. I took, again, three layers of different types of laces, placed it on the top and took this to the sewing machine and I double stitched along the top. After it was double stitched, I added another one of those little leaf pieces. I glued it on and I just glued a little piece of the tatting on top. So this is a beautiful little notepad that fits inside of here. And I have a paper clip a regular paper clip that I just tied a little strip of fabric. It's that same Tim Holtz fabric that we're using. And this is an envelope from the kit. I cut out one of the little, I, I'm going to call it a little button circle because to me it looks like a button. And I just placed it on top. And when the envelope was folded, I took a stapler and I just, there's a little small Tim Holtz staple that is making a little closure flap for the envelope. And inside, I stitched around a card and it's plain, so you can journal. And I like to just double stitch all the way around. And I tucked it inside and took, and this is not glued down. I just left it and tucked it underneath. And then I glued one of these little long snippets that I, well, not long snippets, it's cheesecloth, a very narrow bit of lace, some more lace, and then I just did loose French knots and French knots, and I glued that little piece on top. So I, I used some of this packing tape as a to glue the arm or to sorry to tape the envelope on and to tape the envelope on this way and I glued on a fussy cut mushroom and I just put a little snippet that I made using the little cheesecloth a little piece of cheesecloth like this a little bit a little bit of it's not tatting it's a little bit of crocheted bit it's just a small little bit and I just sewed it on with some brown thread. Then I glued it onto here. And to keep it shut, I just stick my paper clip in here and I like to see things and stuff hanging out the side. So I'm pointing, just positioning my, my fabric to the side. I turn it over and this is the other flap that we're going that we close shut this is we also can put something in here if we like a long tag or a folded piece of paper but we're going to open this up and show I'll show you what I did in here oh look at that I was wondering what the heck okay so this fell out of here so we did 
Okay, so what did I do? Oh, this fell out. Okay, here. Maybe that was an extra. Okay, so inside here, inside this beautiful portion, I just love these. They're drawn torn pockets, and I fussy cut them. And I took these two images. I glued a little bit of the fussy cut leaves, the foliage, fall foliage leaves. I put the slightly darker one on the bottom and the slightly lighter colored one on the top. Made two tags the exact same way as I just said for the other portion. And I'm going to put, are they, does it matter which one I put where? I'm gonna put the browner one on the bottom and the greener one on top. And I like how the, the little snippet tag toppers fit on the tags. Here we have the pockets. And I took this to the sewing machine. You probably can't see that stitching, but if you turn it over, you can see the stitching on that side. And again, I layered as one layer of that torn lace on the back, one on the front, and then I took my Tim Holtz attacher and placed two staples, staple, staple. And I tucked it in here. And I did the exact same thing for this one. It stitched along the perforation. And I placed one, two pieces of torn lace. And I stapled. Tuck it on top. And we have this other file folder. So inside this file folder, I put a couple of things. I put this beautiful piece from the printable. I added three different layers of lace trim and I sewed it with a French knot. Or Yes, I sewed it with a French knot. And then I glued it onto this piece of paper. On the back, I made a collage, printable, printable strip, and a printable fussy cut leaves. And I attached two strips of this packing tape onto here. So that's one. And a smaller one is this, and I believe it's just plain with just a leaf glued on the back. And then this other piece. I glued the fussy cut piece. And so it sits like that. I wanted this snippet to be in the center of that file folder. Then I tuck that out. Then I tucked this in and it's just beautiful. Close this and there is room for a large tag. We just haven't created it yet. And I'm closing this. There we are. So this is a beautiful folio that can sit so far. Well, this is just waiting to be sewn, so I haven't done anything with this yet. And this removable folio, oops, I'm out of screen. Shuffle on over. Shuffle on over. All my scissors, my bunny rabbits. Okay, so we're going to tuck this folio. I like how I use the fabric, same fabric on the hinges as I did to line this journal of ours. So it's just going to lay in here. And I will be attaching it with twine to hook it, to attach it. And so that sits in here. And we have our beautiful, well, this was just drawing, so I can take this off. We've done this already. This is our writing journal. And you see how nice it coordinates when you have using the same fabric. So I haven't decorated this yet, just the edges of that. So I just wanted to show you how it sits in here. So now we have room still, there's still room because we still have an inch and a half here to go to put our journal in here. So this is just the, the two folios, we, or the folio and the writing journal. 
we will have a beautiful wrap. And I'm just laying it in here for now. And I will be attaching some of this beautiful Battenberg here as well. So off I go to start creating the inner journal.